should your property business register for VAT? Let's have a look today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcott, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. In property, normally when we talk about VAT, we'd say it's to do with residential property, it's exempt from VAT, therefore it's irrelevant. However, there are a few occasions where that registration is very relevant for a property business. And I just wanted to cover off how to get registered if it is relevant in your business. So when would you need to register for VAT? Well, the main areas that we need to consider VAT for property relate to if you're a new build project, if you're looking at commercial property, if you have serviced accommodation, and if you're a property sourcing business. Because on these occasions, you may want to or need to be VAT registered. So what do I mean by want to or need to? Well, you need to be VAT registered when your VAT taxable turnover is over 85,000. So this means your income from your serviced accommodation, your sourcing fees, your new build project is going to sell for over 85,000. And at the point it goes over 85,000, you'll have to get registered for VAT. And we'll go into the when in a moment. However, you may choose to be VAT registered before that point, and that is known as voluntary registration. So for a new build project, we tend to suggest voluntary registering as soon as you know you're going to be selling that property, because at that point you're selling for 0%, therefore you can claim things back before then. For something like a sourcing or a serviced accommodation business, you might want to wait until you hit the 85,000, because if you're clients are going to be not businesses or not VAT registered individuals or businesses, they'll be incurring an extra 20% on your service. Therefore, you may want to delay until the point where you have to be registered for VAT. For commercial property, there's something called an option to tax. And if this is in place, you'll need to charge VAT and you may consider VAT registering the rest of the business. But that we will cover in a separate video on commercial property and options to tax to give you a bit more insight into that area of property VAT. So the next question I tend to get asked is, well, when do I need to and how do I register for VAT? So the when is you've got 30 days after going over the registration limit of 85,000. So as soon as you go over in whatever period, you've got another month to go and get registered for VAT. Then how you get registered for VAT, let's jump onto HMRC's website and let me show you where you need to go. Check out the link in the description below of how to get to the registration section of HMRC's website. Now, as you can see, you can register online. Now, it's a very simple process. You just need certain information available as you register. Most of the information that you'll need is, to be honest, relatively straightforward. So most of it you should have to hand with any of your business records that you have around you. As we've already mentioned, you've got 30 days after the point that you go over the registration to get registered. So they give you a month's grace basically, which hopefully means then you can update any prices and any paperwork and add in your VAT number to any paperwork that you're sending out to your customers and clients. When you've VAT registered and you're all set up for your business, you'll then need to submit VAT returns on a quarterly basis online digitally through your software. If you've not got software, then do check out the video on what software options are available and what you might need to consider when setting one up. And the key thing here is you'll need to do it digitally. So you will need some sort of software or if you're using Excel, some sort of bridging software to get things sent into HM Revenue and Customs. The information that you'll be submitting is the income that you've received or the VAT that you've received, the expenses that you've incurred VAT on, and the net, which is the amount payable or the amount repayable. And then the final few boxes on a VAT return just show the net sales and the net purchases 
and maybe anything overseas if you are doing anything overseas. This is the basics of what you'll need to do for your VAT returns. There is a few more complications, but we'll cover those in some separate videos so as to take our time to make sure that you've got all the key facts at the right time as you're getting things moving on your VAT registration. Hopefully today you've discovered when it is right for your property business to register for the for VAT. Also, how to go about doing that and what it really means. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments box below and we'll do some more videos on VAT to make sure you're happy with how it all fits together. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. Let's make tax less taxing. Let's make tax less taxes.